So you've all watched my and my dad's videos that we have done on this bike. And we first want to say thank you very much for giving us your time. Second, we see all of your comments uh, asking where the next video is, and well, that's where the big problem starts here. There's been a bump along the road, and I'd like to call that missing footage. So me as the main filmer of this was a major amateur and did not organize very well at all. So to finish up this whole series, this is a video describing how to build a bike in a nutshell. I hope you enjoy and, and enjoy the videos to come. So before we ever started building the bike, first we had to buy the parts. First item that we bought was the frame. We went with the giant XTC SLR 27.5. Some of the requirements while searching for a frame was that it would be a 1x11 drivetrain, more on that later. It would have a good geometry. It was light. It was reasonably cheap. We found this one for around $180. Um, it was two years old. And the last one was that it would be a hardtail because it was my first real mountain bike, so we still wanted to keep it cheap, but also that would be versatile. A quick disclaimer, my dad and I are not pros at all. We simply wanted to give building a bike a try, and so we did. This is the way we built the bike, and not necessarily how you should. So I just want to put that out there real quick. The second item we bought was the drivetrain. We went with the Shimano Dior XT M8000 1x11 drivetrain. We went with this because we thought it would be the most simple drivetrain. I knew that I didn't need a big array of gears, so we figured 11 would be enough. There will be more videos than this on the future and how it has been working. So how to install the 1x11 Shimano Dior XT M8000 drivetrain and crank set. The socket that the crank set fit in was pressed into the frame by our local bike shop. Once this was done, we thoroughly lubricated the surface of the crank set and then slid it into the socket. It will not go in by, it by itself, but a quick punch of a rubber mallet to a towel on the crank will put it right in. Then to assemble the rear 11 gears of the cassette, we took a look into the manual. It tells you all you need to know about the correct way to set the separate gears of the cassette stacked on top of each other properly, and then how to mount them to the rear wheel. Since these are part of the drivetrain step, we will now talk about the wheels. So here's a quick description of our wheels. We went with a Mavic wheel set with Maxxis tires. They are nothing too aggressive, just your regular do-it-all tires. I've ridden them everywhere from doing street riding and bunny hopping, all curbs I could find, to muddy single track trails at my local bike park. Also, you can check out our in-depth unboxing review and assembly by the links posted on the screen right now and in the description. The next part we assembled was the suspension. We went with a Fox 32 float fork with a CTD remote. We chose this for a couple reasons. One, it had the amount of travel I was looking for. We picked the version with 100 millimeters of travel. Two, it was a reliable brand, and three, that it had a CTD remote. The CTD remote was the main selling point on this fork as it allows the shock to be adjusted in less than a second. CTD stands for Climb, Trail, and Descend. As you hit a hill, you press the lever on your handlebars down two notches or all the way, and the fork hardens up. Trail is in the middle and descent is as soft as it can get, giving you a cushy ride. Don't forget to check out our full in-depth video on how we installed it via the links posted in the description below. There will also be more videos on how it has been working. Now for a brief overview on how we installed the fork. First we set the bearings in the head of the frame for where the fork goes. Once this was done, we flipped the bike over making sure the bearings didn't fall out, and then we flipped it around to insert the fork from the bottom of the frame. Then we flipped it back over, holding the fork in place, and attached the top bearing cap to hold it all together. Once this was done, we put our spacers, stem, and one more spacer on. Then finally we cut the fork pipe with pipe cutters, capped it off, and it was all set to go. You can do this with a hacksaw. As a matter of fact, if you have a carbon steering tube, you have to do this with a hacksaw. Uh, you'll need to score it with something to show where you need to cut it. But we're going to try it with this tubing cutter and see if it'll make it through. Next we installed the brake rotors. We went with Shimano XT SMRT86 rotors. We then chose a 160mm rotor for the rear and 180mm for the front. 
We chose this configuration because from research we did, we found that having a larger rotor in the front is ideal as it is where most of the braking power should happen. To install the rotors, we mounted them to each of the Mavic wheels, which is quite simple. However, there is a specific way to tighten them to ensure they will lay flat as well as not be damaged while tightening them. Again, make sure to check out the description to see the in-depth video on how to do this. Why do you go straight across? Um, for the equal pressure, so that it doesn't hurt it. Keeps it nice and flat. The next thing we assembled were the handlebars and pedals. First, I'll start with the pedals. We went with the Crank Brothers Double Shot Pedal. While picking pedals, the first question we asked ourselves was, if we wanted clipless pedals or flat pedals. I knew that I wanted to improve as a rider and saw the clipless pedals as an advantage and more pro-like approach at mountain biking. However, I also knew I am a kid who likes to mess around and bike casually with my friends too, which is not done comfortably with a clipless system. So to solve this, we went with a hybrid pedal. One side is flat and the other is clipless. I highly recommend these and there will be a video on how I have liked them so far. Again, to see how to install them, check the link in the description box down below. Now onto the handlebars. We picked Raceface Alloy Riser handlebars. We figured the rise would give them a slightly aggressive feel and having them be alloy would keep them light while still being cheap. To install them, it is as simple as can be. You unscrew four screws, set the handlebar where you'd like it, and screw them back in. However, there's again a special pattern to screw them in, so check out our unboxing and installation video of the pedals and handlebars in the description below. Next we installed the levers on our newly installed handlebar. For levers, we went with Shimano XT SL M8000 brake and shift levers. We chose these because they went with the brake rotors and cassette system we chose. Reliability and compatibility were our main priorities over weight. The XDR components would be the lighter version, but with cost as a bigger priority, we figured the XT components would do the job just fine. So far they've been holding up great, and there will be more videos on how they've been working and how to realign them when you have troubles. Installing the actual shifters is quite simple, as all you have to do is unscrew a single point and screw it back in to attach the levers. But routing the cables and bleeding the brakes becomes a little more difficult. However, we'll have a video on that soon, so check the description box down below to find out how to do this. Now on to installing and bleeding the brakes. And this is where we lost some of our footage, so we don't have a lot to show you, but we can tell you how we did it. First we chose the Shimano M8000 Shimano brake system, which is the calipers and cables. We stay with the XT level of Shimano components for the best combination of performance, price, and weight. The brakes come packaged pre-bled, however we had to bleed them again ourselves as we had to cut the brake cables to route them through our frame. Bleeding is the process of getting the air out of the hydraulic fluid in the braking system. We found good videos on YouTube on how to bleed Shimano brakes. Now on to installing the rear derailleur and adjusting it. To finish the bike, we put the wheels back onto the bike, installed the rear derailleur, installed the chain, and then adjusted the derailleur, which was the final step before the first test ride. We lost most of our footage again for these tutorials, but again we took the same procedure as the rest of the bike. We followed manufacturer instructions along with YouTube tutorials to adjust and install the rear derailleur. Once this was done, my dad and I put air in the tires, brought the bike outside, and took it on its first test ride. At the time of creating this video, I have rode this bike for over a year and still love it and ride it every week. So this everyone is what you've all been waiting for. This is the finished bike. Um, so I was thinking I would go over each part with you, uh, talk about it a little bit, just tell you how it's been working and uh, show you every part up close and yeah, here we go. Alright, so here we are. So we've got the handlebars. Uh, I went with white grips, which at first I thought was a good idea, and then halfway through they got dirty, and I was like, I don't like it. Well, with the whole color scheme, it's not bad, but I think black would have been better. Uh, shifters, brakes are working great, shifters are working great. Uh, these are push or pull, you can go whichever way you want. Um, then we've got the CTD remote over here, and then here's the shocks. 
that's with it all the way out and then when you lock it nothing happens so i've been liking that a lot uh, i put this little guard on right here because i would get a lot of rocks coming up and hitting the bottom of my frame and i didn't like that um, and also they would be flinging up into my eyes that might be from the front i don't know but um, this has been good um, then we've got the internal cable routing over here um, i have my seat really low right now we don't want this seat there's the seat. Um, it's really thin, but I have some padded uh, riding shorts, so they keep that nice and comfortable. Uh, it doesn't make your butt too sore. I have a really low right now with the geometry. It's really good for jumping, so I just lower the seat down and it goes into a great BMX type bike. And the tires, they've been working great for over a year. I don't see any like obvious bad uh, or overuse or wear and tear. So they've been working really great, great traction. Um, I did zip tie this chain guard down here. Uh, it falls off sometimes, but that's all good. Uh, the derailleur, I have had to realign that sometimes after some mountain biking trails. Um, it's gotten a little messed up, and then the the, uh, the chain would jump over, and it wouldn't just stay stuck on one gear. Uh, so there's that. The, 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 the um, disc brakes, they've been working amazing. Uh, their braking power is really great. I like those a lot. Um, let's see what else. The pedals, they've probably shown the most wear just from... Uh, me trying to figure out how to use the uh, the clipless system, but being able to switch from clipless to flat has been working amazing. They've got awesome grip on the flat side, and then on the clipping side, they've been working great too. Um, you do have to buy the shoe separately and then like set that up, but that was a super easy process. Let's see, what else can I talk about? Um, color scheme, I still like that, especially with the orange bars, those have been great. Uh, my friends dig the bike a lot too. Super comfy ride, super aggressive. I think the fa my favorite part is the geometry, but um, I think that's basically it. If you'd like to hear more about it, uh, tell me what you'd like to see in the comments, and then I'll make more videos about that, uh, and I'll show you more about it. But uh, here's the bike, and uh, thank you.